Hi, hello everyone. In this session, we'll talk about automated testing in Android. So first of all, uh, as usual, the links to um, you know resources for learning what, what testing is, um, how to do testing on Android. Espresso is a framework for um, instrumented testing that we'll look at. Um, and then finally, we'll look at this um, um, application exercise of the name Monkey. Okay, so these are the links from uh, Android developer blog that you can and should refer to. Right, so what we are going to talk about is essentially the behavior testing. Um, so, and, and automated testing of that, right? So uh, when you write a software, um, how does it behave? Does it give you the expected values for the operations? Right. That is something that is very critical. Your app may look great on some devices, but uh, we should go and check how it behaves um, on, 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 on specific inputs. And uh, doing this manually is obviously tedious and error prone. So doing it in an automated way is recommended. And then um, we have several tools to do that for you. Uh, in the Java world, JUnit is uh, arguably the most popular and uh, powerful um, tool and uh, Android supports it, the fourth version of JUnit. Um, and that's what we'll look at uh, in, a, in a minute. Um, so well-written tests, uh, they, they help you catch bugs um, very early on in the development cycle, and then you can fix those. And uh, this philosophy of uh, testing along with development or test-driven development, uh, as it's often called, uh, also uh, leaves you with a large set of test cases that you can run with just one button click. And then later on, you know, maintenance is easier because any change you make, um, you click that button and see how many test cases pass, which ones fail, fix those, and then you know you are you're somewhat um, confident about your code. Um, having you know at least low number of known bugs okay so that's that's the idea here so uh, through that um, you gain confidence in your code okay so that's the like the philosophical background um test driven development is the development methodology philosophy uh, goes hand in hand with uh, agile development uh, where uh, testing is identified as the crucial part of modern software development not just something you know something that uh, that's a report that you should provide before releasing the software, but like testing is, is key um, to your development. And then the developers themselves write test cases, um, not some QA business analyst person who is uh, outside of the development work. So um, um, this uh, agile based test driven development of software leads to um, Improvement in codes, flexibility, maintainability, and reusability uh, is what people have observed over the last decade or so. Um, and again, arguably, this is one of the dominant software development philosophies uh, in the world out there at present. Okay. So, what we'll do here is we'll do a brief introduction to TDD, uh, test driven development. Um, it's kind of out of scope to go into, you know, go into depth, but students are encouraged to read the existing literature. I will talk about TDD, I'll introduce, or rather I'll you know, demonstrate an app developed using test driven development in this uh, video series uh, on this topic. Um, but like rest of the rest of the semester doesn't really enforce test driven development. Um, although I personally like it and I highly, highly recommend um, that students pick it up at this time and start practicing with it um, and you know gain reasonable mastery through this semester. However, that's uh, up to you. Uh, although automated testing will be part of all the assignments and uh, evaluative component. Okay, so like, I mean, it's a kind of a balance between you need to do automated testing, whether you do it in a test-driven development format or not is up to you, okay. All right, so uh, Bob Martin, a very well-known author, uh, software engineer, um, has written these three laws of test-driven development. 
One, you may not write any production code until you have a failing unit test. So you should start with a failing unit test, okay? And you may not write more of a unit test than is sufficient to fail and not compiling is considered failing. So you'll only write um, a unit test that, that will fail, okay? not more than that. And when you encounter that failing unit test, you basically, you may not write production code um, you know, more than what is sufficient to pass that failing test. So only write that much code. So this is a, and TD is more of a, a discipline um, and a philosophy than just a practice. Okay. So what this will do, we, we, by, by following this, you essentially end up tying yourself into this cycle of writing a failing test case and then writing the code to make that test case work then go back and write another test case that fails and then go and write a code that um, that makes that new test case work and so on and so forth. So at every time you'll have test cases that will, um, that will have tested the code you are going to write. Okay? Uh, that's the idea here. So as I said, we won't go into more depths uh, of this, but uh, that practice really helps you create that um, you know, reasonably large um, set of test cases with good coverage um, and any later modifications can be quickly um, tested by just running all the test cases that you already have. Refactoring and all is also very easy if you keep uh, doing these small incremental changes. All right. So now we are going to put TDD in action with a new app called units. Um, this app is designed to um, you know, um, help a user convert quantities from one unit to another. For example, temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit, distance from miles to kilometers, and so on. Um, however, right now we'll only focus on the temperature category. And uh, you can add the other features later on as exercise. So um, I'll, I'll demonstrate and I urge students to pause the video when appropriate and do the steps um, along with the video instead of just you know, sitting on your chair um, or lying on your bed and watching the video. Okay. So yeah, first of all, we'll create a new project named Unix. So that's my Android Studio, new project. The steps are similar to what you did in your um, assignment zero, but just follow along. We'll use an empty activity. Name it units. We'll leave other things as it is. You're using Android uh, 5, that is Lollipop, which is good, good enough. Package name, I am using all Android samples for Java dot. You can use any other package name and make sure it's placed at the right location on your computer. Okay. But that's your choice. Right. Okay, so when we create um, this new app, it's going to take a second or so to load everything. Let me go back to the slides while this is going on. And, uh, you know, the layout and strings, I'm going to just give it to you. Go to this link here, which is a gist on my GitHub, and that should bring you to this. Okay, yeah. right there. Okay. So use this XML file, copy the code and paste it in your activity main XML. Just like this, oh, not ready yet. Yeah, that's that. And then you have sorry. And yeah, here you have my strings not excellent. So you know that way you'll just save some time in um 
creating the layout. Strings.xml replace everything with this. Okay, that's all. So let's see how that looks like. So yeah, this is this is how the UI will look like. There is a switch button that lets you toggle between Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius. And there is an input value here and then convert button, which will put the output value on this text view, which is not visible right now because it's uh, it, it, it holds an empty string. Okay, um, that's all we have so far. Okay, go back to the slides. And we'll now talk, talk about the um, other aspects while my Android Studio is loading very slowly today, unfortunately. Anyway, so to get um, um, to, to, to get your project to run the unit test cases that we want, make sure these dependencies are um, added to your Gradle, um, um, app level Gradle file. Okay? And uh, yeah, these are the current latest versions, but uh, make sure you use the latest ones whenever you are doing anything. I mean, even if like six, six or 12 months down the line, if you're referring to this video, I'm pretty sure these numbers, uh, some of these numbers will have changed. So use the latest ones. Okay. Um, right, let's go back to the project. I hope it is uh, synced by now. And let's see. Label dependencies. Okay. Um, it's still running here. Let like it do that. I think we have the ones we wanted. We have J in it. Right. It gives the warning to use the specific version and shows you the latest one by itself. Great. Um, yeah, we have Android X test EXT. We have Android test Espresso. So the first one is done. And then now we want these Android test implementation. And com Android support test runner one zero two. Com test runner. I got it right. It's a common test. Yeah, colon runner. Okay. And then we have Android X test UI automator, UI automator to be zero. Android X test. Right, so that should take care of the first part of our setup. I've clicked sync, so now it's syncing the whole thing. Okay. And actually, before going further, we'll just run um, run this app to see if the UI is reasonable. Okay. <clears throat> I have this Android uh, AirDroid installed, which is mirroring my um, my phone that is connected. Okay. Okay, not bad. I clicked the wrong button. Let's see. Yeah. Let it install. What day is the assignment which will be coming soon? Wow, that's really slow. <laughs> so I've succeeded, installed, and going. Okay, all right. That's uh, reasonable. If we go to this, it, yeah, it opens a numeric keyboard, which is great. Let's see 
room temperature, Celsius to Fahrenheit 37. Of course, the convert button won't do anything, but the switch also works, right? So that is good enough, you know, sort of um, sanity check. Okay, let's go back here. So that's the initial setup. We have uh, the gradual dependencies. Now, let's look at what JUnit tests it provides. So first of all, where are they? So inside Java, you see the, um, the package here, okay? And here it's Android samples .unit. Inside that, you'll find all your classes. Um, you can create, of course, some modules here. And then you see Android test and test um, organized like these. If you go to the, the project view, they are organized under source, test, Java, blah, 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 and source, Android test, Java, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so these are the files. I'll go back to the Android view because that's easier to switch it up. Let's look at our example unit test. So this is the code we have on slide. Okay, let me take you there. Yeah. So example unit test, and then the code inside that. So this is under source test, as we saw. And the at test annotation in JUnit 4 onwards um, indicates that this is the test case that we want to be executed. This method must be public, returning void, and with no parameters. Um, these are the constraints on the kind of methods you can write for testing, right? And then inside this, uh, we only have this assert equals call, which checks if the expected value, that is the first parameter, four in this case, matches the actual value, which is the second parameter, the expression two plus two in this case, okay? So let's go back to the code. And you see these uh, markers here for running the test cases. This will run all the test cases in this class. This one will run just the one, the test case that you're on. Let's look at the import statements. So uh, you have org unit test, uh, org JUnit test, sorry. So this guy is coming from that. And then assert equals is coming from org JUnit assert dot star, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So run this particular test case. You see this uh, tool window open up at the bottom, and as expected, it, it, it passes, right? I mean, four is two plus two, so no surprise there. But what will happen if you made a mistake and let's say you typed a wrong expression, so two minus two, for example, right? Um, yeah, it's acting smart and tells us it can be replaced with zero. So not a very meaningful test, of course, but let's try that. Let's just see what happens when it fails. So when it fails, it gives you a whole lot of messages. Scroll all the way, uh, sorry, click on the test that failed and scroll all the way up. It will tell you expected four, but was zero. Okay. So this is the kind of messages you get. And to be honest, it's the failing test cases that are of interest. If nothing is failing, then you don't have an interesting piece of code, right? Okay, so that's the like the basic anatomy of um, your JUnit test. Of course, we are not testing anything meaningful here, but this is how it is, all right? So that's the basic test case. Next, we have an in instrumented test case also provided with the um, with the with the generated code. And let's see what all we have here. Um, excuse the slide. So you know, this this will remain with you. So yeah, first of all, this class is under source and Android test, and it's going to use a custom runner called Android JUnit 4. Class. So JUnit supports running it on the default runner, uh, which is for the basic Java, and also providing these custom runners. Like in this case. It's Android JUnit 4, which uh, you know, basically for, for our purposes, what it means is it, it, it runs on um, an, in, it, it runs an instrumented instance, like it runs it on an actual device, okay. Then what else do we have here? Um, we again have the at test, of course, right? Um, and 
we have then um, this test case, which is again a public void method with more parameters. And this is going to check if the context that we get with this chain of calls matches the context that is the package name that we have given, All right? So let's see what it's doing. Um, instrumentation registry, it holds a reference to the uh, instrumentation running in the process and all its arguments. So uh, this is actually going to run on the device. And then the next line, get instrumentation, um, it captures it, captures the instrumentation from the registry. And the next line, get target context, extracts the context out of it, as you would expect. Um, and then the assert equals, well, it compares the string and our examples for Java units with the app context dot get package name. So extract the package name out of it and compare it. That's all it's doing, right? Again, it will, it will work as expected. But here is the thing. Um, this is going to run on a device. So if you go here and let's see, okay, we, it's not in the runners yet, but let's let just run this. Okay. See, it's going to run it on the device and we'll see it here. See the app, like the previous run of the app closed. It's trying to install on the device. It says launch succeeded. And it says test passed. It did not really show anything here because there were no actions, but um, it's kind of a proof of concept that it actually ran on the device. And uh, it also shows how many milliseconds it took. So here it took 15 milliseconds, which is much, much larger compared to what we saw earlier. Okay. This one will run in hardly one millisecond. Okay. Or not, it's meant to prove me wrong. Running test, yeah, two milliseconds. It finished in two milliseconds, whereas the instrumented test took 15 milliseconds. So best practices suggest that you know you do as much um, non-instrumented JUnit testing of the of the of the of the of the logic of your app as possible and be economical with the instrumented test because it's actually going to run on the device all right okay so uh, we are at the last part of our um, setup configuration for this so this assert equals and such things from the standard JUnit are not very declarative or readable. So what we are going to use is a new library called Hamcrest, which is uh, extremely declarative, makes reading your test cases and writing them very easy. Um, Hamcrest is not a new word, it's just an anagram of matchers, which so uses creative uh, ways of matching things. That's all it is. For that, you have to add this to your Gradle. So let's go back and do it. Org hamcrest colon hamcrest hyphen all 1.3. Okay. Uh, where is my Gradle? Yeah. Um, so implementation. Um, Org rest. Um, and first from all, I think. And then this was the latest one. Let's quickly check. All right, sync again. And you should have compressed part ready in your test cases. Yeah. We'll do one more sort of C change. So import the appropriate matches. We want the assert that and equal to. Um, Okay, let's try to be somewhat over smart and let me just change this. Let's say assert that. And then let's say four and equal to this. Now Android Studio is going to suggest us what to import. This is from Hamcrest matches equal to. That's what we want. 
and assert that should be okay not this so let's remove that it was giving an uh, it, it was considering it one of the uh, deprecated methods from JUnit, which we don't want we want the static method this one match match and assert dot assert that okay see this one assert dot assert that is the deprecated one which we don't want we want this method that's what was happening all right now we have it let's run it yeah well, it took seven milliseconds this time probably not as good as the last one and what has changed well nothing really has changed here uh, but uh, our asserts are now much more readable like assert that four equal to two plus two which is more readable than what we had before okay uh, you may not feel the difference right now but uh, very soon with our uh, real test cases you'll see um, how well it looks all right okay so that's all for this video in the next one we'll start making